Hello folks, I hope that you are having just the best day in your life today. Today I want to take a look at Clark Ashton Smith. We're going to be going back to this collection of Vintage from Atlantis, which I mostly finished for you. Um, but I had a short story in it called The Colossus of, and I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Y-L, you'll see it, you'll see it in the title. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce it. It might be French. Um, the Colossus. Uh, from uh, Galore, oh, who knows? Um, and so we're going to be reviewing a short, short story. And I didn't read it um, and do it when I was doing a deep dive into Clark Ashton Smith because it's longer, and I knew it would take me uh, a longer than just a day to read it. Uh, so I finished it yesterday. I took a couple of days out of my 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 reading to knock it out, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, so, so so I knocked out the Colossus. It's set in the Avernois setting, uh, which is a, a world that Clark Ashton Smith created, set in the Dark Ages in your in in France. Um, it's one of the worlds that he creates. Um, Clark Ashton Smith was one of the big three for the pulp era, uh, for the pulp magazine called Weird Tales. Um, he was incredibly prolific in, in the pulp era. He wrote a lot of fantasy, some science fiction, and uh, and some horror too. Um, and this is science i'm sorry this is more of a fantasy with a horror feel uh than than any than it is science fiction which he doesn't do that often but he does it enough uh to remember his short stories now this world um is famous and might be his most well-known world because it was featured in a dungeons and dragons module called castle amber and in castle amber uh by tom moldvay a dungeons and dragons basic dungeons and dragons module x2 uh, you take place uh, with these characters in the um, Ambervilles in this chateau, and then there is a portal near the end that takes you back to a world which is exactly like the world of this, um, and it's incredibly interesting. And so it's a, so the uh, the world of my Stara and Dungeons and Dragons is directly tied to this world. Clark Ashton Smith is a poet. He wrote some poetry before he was even of age. Uh, he was and published them, uh, and then when his parents were sick, he turned to writing prose, and he wrote it heavily while he was sick. I mean, he was churning out short stories left and right for uh, the five or six years when his parents uh, were sick. But when his parents died, um, his he gave up his his output, and also his friends Robert E. Howard and Clark Ashton Smith and Robert E. Howard uh, and H.P. Uh, Lovecraft died, and then Clark Ashton Smith didn't wasn't dedicated. His parents had died, um, and his two best friends, who had been sort of his inspiration for writing, had died too, um, in 36 and 37, respectively. Uh, so, there just wasn't a whole lot of other things for him to do, and so he turned his muse off. Uh, and he might occasionally turn to prose poetry or to sculpture, um, but his loss uh, is our loss too, uh, because unfortunately this guy was a brilliant, brilliant writer. Now he uh, was, he had an, uh, an eidactic memory. So he remembered the things that he read as a kid growing up. Um, he read a dictionary, he wrote an encyclopedia. So he will not let you forget that he knows words that you don't know. <laughs> and he's going to include them in his works. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a regular thing where I'll come across a word that I'll be like, I don't know what that word means. And I, I have a pretty high IQ. But I don't know what that word means. So I gotta go look it up. We'll just ignore it and figure it out from context clues. And his and there's there's a, a lot of crazy words that are that are used heavily in this short story, um, which is really more of like a, a short novella, if you will, a, a novelette, if I remember correctly, is the between a short story and a novella. Now I find his writing to be very dense. So I spent about 75 minutes over two days reading this 30 page short story because it's just incredibly dense. And again, it's at 30 pages of my, my oversized collection of uh, vintage from Atlantis. Uh, so what happens in this short story, which I'm gonna be giving, or novelette if you will, uh, which I'm gonna be giving it eight out of 10 to because it's that good. Well, a lot happens. Um, it's an incredibly detailed piece, but basically what's gonna start off happening is, is that there is this uh, necromancer, demonologist, short little guy, uh, who lives in, in in one of the smaller villages uh, in the in the district of Avernois in France, in southern France? And uh, our our friend 
uh, the, the diminutive person has left, and we don't know why. And so we're going to follow along with some of the rumors of the local town as to what happened to him and why he left. Now, he had lived near a local church, uh, which was considered a big Im Im impiety, because uh, the guy's clearly a bad guy. He's clearly an antagonist. Uh, he's clearly a villain. Uh, he's he's definitely in league with Satan. He has what what are called um, what the book refers to as, as ten Satan given apprentices. He has familiars, um, which uh, in this time were more like demons than they were like the modern take of familiar in fantasy, where it could be like an owl or or, or a uh, or a rat, right, or a ferret. I mean, back it could be acute familiars. Back then, they were more than likely just demons, uh, and so. His familiar would be more demonic in nature. But uh, anyway, so he's got familiars, he's casting magic, uh, and that sort of thing's happening. Uh, the first chapter ends just a couple pages into the short story. Um, and then the second chapter is going to open up, and some of the bodies uh, from a graveyard have gone missing. Um, initially, they think it was this robbed uh, by the dead. Uh, as tomb robbers, it doesn't appear to be, because they appear to have broken up from above, from below to above rather than inside out. Uh, so uh, they weren't broken from above down to below, uh, nor were the caskets opened up from the outside, but they appear to have burst. Um, and then it looks like something bursted the coffin under the ground and then climbed up. And there appears to be a lot of them. And this appears to be happening again and again and again. Also, the bodies are those that are young, healthy men. Not women, not young, healthy women, uh, not older men or older women or, or young uh, men or, or boys or girls, uh, but men and women that are, but just, just young men. And they could be villains, they could be bandits, they could be monks, they could be noblemen, they could be peasants and farmers, uh, but the dead uh, are, are also thinking things. We also see a couple of undead rising from uh, funerals and, uh, and, and heading out to uh to leave the place uh and then we're going to follow along with where those bodies are going um and that's sort of our entry point into the short story proper there in chapter two which is also just a couple of pages long too there's like 10 chapters and 30 pages so each chapter roughly three pages although there's one in the middle that's like four but there's like six or seven pages long um and it's the longest uh, but most of the most of the chapters are two or three pages long each out of 30 pages uh, and so there you go. That's the Colossus of whatever. I cannot pronounce it. Have you, and I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read it? What did you think of it? Did you agree or disagree with my take on it in any way or shape or form? I would be more than happy to engage you with it further in the comments below. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? Because there's going to be a lot more of these to follow in fantasy, science fiction, and horror. And this is two of those three. Fantasy and horror in one. Uh, so there you are. I'll leave you to it. Thanks again for your time and have a great day.